Hello, I'm Mayor Bill Carpenter. Over the next few months, my office will be producing a series of ESL classes that specialize in helping Brockton residents acquire English skills to increase employment opportunities. This class is called English for Employment. This represents an unprecedented partnership between the Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board, CareerWorks, the Brockton Public Schools, Brockton Community Access, and the Mayor's Office. We hope you find this series useful as we continue our mission to bring vital services to the residents of the City of Brockton. Okay, let me try it again. Let's try it again, okay? Hello, this is Lenore Fershing. That's F as in Frank. John, you gonna write my name down? John? Can you write my name down? <laughs> That's F as in Frank. I R S as in Sam C H I N as in Nancy G as in Go. All right, would somebody come up and write my name on the board? Can I have a volunteer to come up and write it on the board? Hmm? To write it on the board, what you have. Who can come up and write my name on the board? You have to be okay with being on the TV camera. <laughs> Anybody want to try it? Want to try it with them? Can I come up and spell it for me? On the, write it on the board? Was it easier that time? Yes. Why was it easier that time? Why, why did you get it that time and not the second time? I spelled it. I spelled it. All right, I'm going to spell it for Woodley, and she's going to write it as I say it. That's F as in Frank, I, R, S as in Sam, C, H, C, 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 H, I, N as in Nancy, G. That's my name. Oh. Beautiful job. Okay. Did you know that's my name? That's my that's my maiden name. That's not my married name. My married name is too easy. Cardoza. Everybody speaks Portuguese around here. So if I did Cardoza, that wouldn't be a challenge. My maiden name is German. So not many people around here have German last names. So a receptionist might not know how to spell or pronounce this. So why was it easier the second time than the first time? What made it easier? You take your time to speak it. I took my time, didn't I? I didn't say F-I-R-S-C-H-I-N-G. What else did I do that made it easier that time? I guess you have to do to make it easier. What else did I do? I, I spoke slowly. I took my time. Yeah. You repeat your name. Okay, Philomena. You repeat the name to to help find the letters of the alphabet. Yes, the letters of the alphabet. We kind of call those code words. There are code words that we can use because, especially on the telephone. It's very difficult to hear the difference between F and S. F and S on the telephone sound the same. Yes. <laughs> yes. V and B. Mm -hmm. G and J on the telephone sometimes sound very, very similar. Um, when I got married in the newspaper, my wedding announcement said this. Searching which is not my name. Because when they called to ask me about it, I didn't say F as in Frank. I just said F-I-R, and they heard S-I-R. So even when people are native English speakers, especially on the phone, use the code to help you, to help to clarify. We have code words that we use. So I'm going to just give you a little list of typical code words that English speakers use that will help on the phone if someone asks you, or in person, how to spell your name. I don't know. 
Have you had to do this before? Have you had to spell your name on the phone before? I need it. And do people ever say, you know, what was that? What was that letter? Was that an F or an S? I did it because you know, in my career, I, I used to use code. Oh, that's right, because you have the on the walkie-talkies. Yeah. So you know, oh yeah, you're good at this. Sometimes people will say on the phone, they'll say, that's uh, F-I-R, and I'll say, that's S-I-R, and they'll say, no, S-I-R, no, F, S, F, S, F, S, and you just go on and on on the phone. So you can avoid all that by doing this. Let's read together, spelling your name. Your last name may be simple. Your last name may be simple. Like Lee. Like Lee. Like Lee. <laughs> or it may be difficult. Or it may be difficult. Like Chavkulov. That's actually the person who wrote the book that this exercise was adapted from. But it is always important to spell your last name when you leave a message on an answering machine or voicemail. It is also important to know how to clarify the spelling of your name when making an appointment or in any other situation where your, name where your name may not be familiar, may not be familiar to, the listener. to the listener. And you can also use this when you are hearing other people's names too. If someone is spelling his or her name for you and you're not sure was that V or B, you could say, is that B as in boy or V as in Victor? You can use this both ways. Not just spelling your name, but to understand how someone else is spelling their name for you. Let's continue reading. Two strategies can help you. Two strategies can help you to spell your name clearly. To spell your name clearly. Especially on the telephone. Especially on the telephone. Strategy one. Strategy one. Spell with rhythm. Spell with rhythm. What's rhythm? <laughs> We think of music, don't we? Junior's starting to dance here in his seat. <laughs> the vibe. The vibe, that's right, with rhythm. Five. Spell, say three or four letters at one time. Say three or four letters at one time. Uh-oh, I lost some of you. Let's do that again. Say three or four letters at one time. Say three or four letters at one time. Then pause. Then pause. Example, my last name... My last name is Chavkulov. Chavkulov. That's C H A F C O U L O F F. Because often people will be writing that down. Our mouths move faster than our brains sometimes. So we have to give the person on the other end time to process what we're saying. So if I say C-H, that person's going to be writing C-H, A-F, A-F. And if I don't pause and I spell the whole thing, I'm going to be on the last letter and they're still going to be writing the first two letters. So spell with rhythm. Say one or two letters, then pause, give them a chance to process it, and continue. Strategy two. Strategy two. Everybody, strategy two. Strategy two. <laughs> Some, letters Some letters sound the same on the telephone. Sound the same on the telephone. Examples, BV, BV, GJ, TD. You can use code words to make the spelling clear. To make the spelling clear. Example. My last name, My last name is, Delgado. is Delgado. That's D E L. That's D E L. G as in go. G as in go. 
A D O. A D O. And we would be able to spell that, wouldn't we? All right, so let's go down the list of code words. We always want to use code words that are very, very familiar to just about everyone. You don't want to choose a word that is a difficult word for people to understand. So these are our typical standard code words that people use when making a phone call in English. Let's do it together. And we use as in to connect the letter and the code word. Be as in boy. B as in boy. C as in cat. C as in cat. D as in David. D as in David. F as in Frank. S as in Frank. Or friend. Or friend. Yeah, you could use that too. G as in go. G as in go. H as in happy. H as in happy. J as in Judy. J as in Judy. K as in kangaroo. K as in kangaroo. L as in Lisa. L as in Lisa. So we're going to say it nice and clearly, and we're going to use those two little words in between, two prepositions, as in. Sometimes people will say, be like boy, but that's going to be difficult for English speakers to understand because the phrase that we are, that is in our ear, that we're used to hearing is be as in boy. So we want to say it as clearly and as understandably as possible. So you don't want to say see like cat or be, be like boy. People won't understand. You want to say be as in boy. Let's go to the top of the next column. M as in Mary. M as in Mary. N as in Nancy. N as in Nancy. P as in Peter. P as in Peter. Q as in Queen. Q as in Queen. R as in Robert. R as in Robert. Now be careful. You don't want to say air. <laughs> in English, R. Right. You've got to practice those English language, <laughs> English alphabet. R as in Robert. R as in Robert. Good. S as in Sam. Yes, That's a universal one. T as in Thomas. T as in Thomas. V as in Victor. V as in Victor. W as in Washington. W as in Washington. Every English speaker will understand that one. <laughs> Up at the top we have the vowels. A as in apple. A as in apple. E as in egg. Egg. Or some people say elephant. Everybody knows that elephant begins with E, so that's an easy way. And often these A, E, I are confusing because in other languages, A is E and E is I. <laughs> so A uh, is A, A is E, E is I. <laughs> So that's often a source of confusion when people are leaving messages in the second language. So this is a big help. A as in apple, E as in egg. Let's say I as in ice cream. I as in ice cream. O as in October. O as in October. Or some people say octopus. Some people like to say, English speakers like to say octopus. Anyone know what an octopus is? Oh, yeah. My husband's family is Portuguese, so I have gone to stores and they actually eat those. <laughs> it's a delicacy, octopus, or October. U as in umbrella. U as in umbrella. X as in x-ray. X as in x-ray. That way they know you're not saying S. X, we wouldn't say s-ray, we say x-ray. Y as in yesterday. Y as in Z as in zebra. Z as in zebra. And we want to pronounce them slowly. Don't hurry. When you're leaving a message, speak slowly. Make sure you articulate every part, and they'll be able to spell your name perfectly. Shall we try another one? Try another experiment? Okay, on your scrap paper, I'm going to tell you a name of someone who was actually my student and my friend, okay? My name is Yolanta Lazaraviciene. 
It's a uh, Lithuanian name. So if you tried to spell Lazarivisiene in any language, if you were not Lithuanian, you would have a tough time, right? So let's write it. I'm going to spell it for you, and I want you to write this person's last name. It's L, A as in apple. Jean, I want you to write with me, okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Do you want to go home? No. Are you sure you're feeling okay? Mm. All right. <laughs> L, A as in apple. Z as in zebra. A, R, A. V as in Victor, I as in ice cream, C as in cat, I, E as in elephant, N as in Nancy, E as in elephant. All right, anyone want to come up to the board and try it? Want to try it? At the board? I think I skipped a syllable, actually. This one Italy? Lithuania. 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 The country of Lithuania. It's a Lithuanian name. Lithuanian. <laughs> Lithuanian. Lithuanian. Okay, from you all. Okay, okay, okay. I know. I know. I know. Lithuania. There's a large. There was a large Lithuanian pro uh, population here. Somebody want to come up and put it on the board? Want to give it a try? I'll spell it for you. <laughs> Nobody wants to go. All right. Let's try another one then. If, you, if you're shy about coming up, it's okay. Let's try another one. This is the name of one of my son's coaches, actually. This person was Russian, and his name was Ishan. Ishan. So if I leave a message on the phone and I say, my name is Ishan, how are you going to spell that? Ishan. <laughs> Pretty close, pretty close, Ishkhan. And you have to know a little bit, to spell it correctly, you would have to know a little bit about Russian pronunciation, right? So let me spell it for you, it's six letters. It's I, write it down, S as in Sam, H, K as in kangaroo, H, <laughs> A, N as in Nancy. All right, so what do we have? <gasps> Who can spell it for me? I, I S, A, H, K, H, E, N. You got it. Now, when I first said Ishkan, everybody went, hmm, what's that? No, oh my gosh, it's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult because it's a Russian name, and we're not familiar with Russian spellings and Russian names. So if we tried to spell it without knowing those strategies, we would probably spell it wrong. And if you're working in a doctor's office, that could be a big problem. What if you get the wrong person's records because of a misspelling on the name? So the spelling of your name is very important. In Russian, in, in his name, this K-H is a K sound. He pronounces it Ishkhan. Um, and I think in some Arabic names, the K-H is K. It's best that makes that sound. But we wouldn't know that. And so we have to practice spelling our names with those code words so that people can spell our names correctly. It's important. All right? So when you spell your last name on your message, I want you to use this strategy, OK? So think about how you would spell your last name using that strategy. 
And then when we give our message, I'm going to ask you to spell it that way. All right? How would you spell your last name using these strategies? Who wants to spell the last name for me? Me? Sure. I want you to spell your last name for me. I'm going to pretend I'm a, I'm a voicemail person. Or I'm a, I'm a secretary, and I'm taking your message off the machine. And I want you to spell your last name for me. My name is Junior. T C T E S. No. No, you can't see me. We're on the phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you have to keep spelling. S as in C. Ah. S S as in C. Sam. Sam. S as in S again, as in C, Sam. Mm -hmm. A as in A as in Apple. Ah, there we and go. You know, you know my problem? Each time I have to start to, 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 to tell you a letter, I, I, have to, I remember have to the, 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 my code. I have, I have a code in my head. Oh, you have the military code. Yeah, I have a code in my head. Yes, Junior was a police officer and a... And a I have a code. <laughs> code yeah. I cannot forget this code, my code. Ah. That's why it's very difficult for me to, 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 to remember the code you just... So when you remember the code, it was the international code, right? So what was the code for S? Sira. Oh, okay. So, so these are more military type. Military type. So keep this next to your phone. You know, when you when you're making your calls about a job, you know, keep this next to your phone so you have it. There's nothing that says you can't keep it right next to you. So notice that I was on the phone, and S and F sound very much alike on the phone. So what I would have done if we were speaking in live, I would say, is that T E F as in Frank, and then you would correct me, no, it's S as in Sam. So if you're speaking with a live person, they may spell your name back to you. And if you hear a mistake, don't say, no F, no S, no S. <laughs> <laughs> they will ask you, is that F? And you say, no, it's S as in Sam. So always polite, if you're correcting somebody's mistake, but you're doing it politely. So always remember on the you know which you probably have had this experience where somebody has tried to spell your name and they get the wrong letter and it's awkward because you're trying to correct them. So this is a way you probably already know which letters in your name are difficult for people, right? Like I know that F and S, so I always say F as in Frank, S as in Sam, because people always confuse those two in my maiden name. Okay, Woodley, would you spell your last name for me, please? My last name is Z, as in Z-Y, ah. as in Z-E, or F is as in F-T, as in Thomas, R. Uh, I, I could hear the R. E, N, N, no, M. No, we're on the phone, you can't see me. <laughs> Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this, okay? Mm -hmm. And tell me your last letter. E. e. So we're on the phone. We're not on voicemail now. I'm the secretary. So I'm going to read it back to you. Okay, ma'am. Is that Z-E-T-R-E-M-M-E? -M -M -E? How are you going to correct me? Now, but remember, we're on the phone. So you're going to start at the beginning again. Yes. And you can say no. No. That's that. Z. Yes. I Tell me the whole thing again. As in Z. That's, that's a Z, Z E T R E N S as in Ah, okay. N as in Now you've corrected me. And then your E. The other important thing to remember, the person on the phone, you can't see what they wrote, and they can't see what you have. So if they read the name back to you and they make a mistake, mm -hmm. start at the beginning of your name again, so they know where to put the end. Okay. So they don't put it here. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> so
So star D E T R E and as in Nancy. And as in Nancy. So it's okay to correct somebody as long as it's done politely. Okay, Claire, spell your last name for me. Uh, T as in Thomas. H as in Happy. C as in eggs. R as in Awabit. N as in Nancy. E as in egg. L as in lion. A as in apple. N as in Nancy. There we go. And I was able to spell it very, very clearly because of the way she did it. Okay, Fernanda, would you spell your last name, please? And let's see if we can write it on your papers, too. Let's listen to your classmates and try to spell their names. F as in Frank. No, last name. Yeah. Oh, okay. F as in Frank. O. N as in Nancy. C as in Thomas. E. S as in Sam. Everybody hear it? Able to write it? Nice and clear, right? Yeah, clear. All right. Philomena, now you have a unique last name. You have two last names. All right. So let's, let's write, we're going to write Philomena's name because she has a little different situation. Okay. My name is Fontes. Fontes. Lopez. Fontes. <laughs> no, but this is a different phone call. <laughs> We can't and use somebody I else's last name. Yeah. I spell Lopez. Mm -hmm. No, no, both. No, both. Okay. Because this is a different phone call. She's applying for different jobs. So. Um, F as in Frank. Okay, everybody, write this down. I want you to write her name because she's going to have a little unique situation. Please write it as she said. O as in Othello. N. As in I see. Uh, T as Tom. E as uh, Aeroplane. S as uh, Sun. Space. <laughs> now, is it a space or is it a. Another name. Uh, do, you, do you hyphenate? Uh, how, how, how do you put it? This is, this is a hyphen. And if you hyphenate, you would also you would say the word. I don't have because I have two. You have two last names, but you don't use the hyphen. Okay, so then you would say space. Space. Okay. If anyone's right, just come find me. No words. Okay, just want to ask you something okay, about sure. that homemaker position. Oh, okay, thanks. So I didn't know if you hyphenated it or not, but if if anybody here uses a hyphen in their last name, that's how you would pronounce it. You would say this, and you would say S as in Sam hyphen, and then the second part of the name. All right, so And as Lisa, O, P, as uh, uh, Peter, uh -huh. E, as Elephant, S, as uh, the Sam. And not S as Sam, but S as in. S as in Sam. Yeah, because we're used to hearing that rhythm. S as in Sam, V as in Victor. So S as in Everybody get it? Was it easy? All right. Magali? Your last name. A as apple. L as lotus. I'm going to say as in. As in. Uh -huh. Lotus. I like that one. <laughs> As elephant. As in, in elephant. Uh-huh. Yes. As in zebra. That's a Z. 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 You can look at your paper. X. X as a X ray. Uh-huh. A as an apple. N as in Nancy, D as in David, R as in Robert, 
and E as an immigrant. Excellent. Now, see, I would pronounce this Alexander, but a native English speaker might not understand, might not hear it because of the accent. So it's a perfect way to be sure that people spell your name correctly. Okay, Jean, what's your last name and spell it for me? Okay. B as in boy. A as in apple. L as in Lisa. A as in apple. N as, as in Nancy. Excellent. See how easy it is to write somebody's name in any language if you use these, these code words. So speak slowly and clearly, use the code words, and then they will always be able to spell your name. Junior? My question is, does code words uh, a universal code or for, 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 for this country? For, for this country. Oh, definitely for this country, because they're American names and American you, you English know. words. They, I know the Interpol, the police, the universal, yeah, yeah, no. that's a little bit different. Talk about here. Yeah, this is just for this country, because you've got all English words and English names that are familiar to English speakers, David, Robert. If I were in France, I would say R, R as in Robert. <laughs> yeah. So this is strictly for English-speaking countries. English speaker. Exactly. Good question. All right, let's go back to your message. We're going to write our, finish writing our message, then we're going to take a little break. Then we're going to come back and read our messages out loud on the phone. Well, I like we're on the phone. So we're going to spell the last name. The next part, I'm calling about the job as, and you want to fill in the job that you want. Okay, back here and on your own. We should be filling this out right now. Yep, Jean, you should have... I want you to fill it in, okay? And you can choose any job you like. Nope, this one. This is on your own. That's the one, yeah. So you're going to say hello. This is your first and last name. You're going to spell your last name. I'm calling about the job as whatever job you want. Now, after it says, I'm calling about the job as, whatever the job is that you want, ESL teacher, and on the next line, it says, tell how you found out about the job. So I might say, I'm calling about the job as ESL teacher. How would we express how we found out about the job? Think about your cover letter. Posting. Going to say, I saw your posting. posting. Where? At Career Works. Yeah. Or we could say on, what's the one that Judy likes? Indeed.com? What if I saw it in the newspaper? What would I say? I saw your ad. In the, we could say Boston Globe, in the Enterprise. We'll Enterprise, use the Enterprise, Enterprise because Enterprise we're on. News. Yeah, Enterprise News, yeah. And that could be online, or we'll use the Enterprise because that's our Brockton newspaper. What if my friend told me about the job? What if, I, what if I didn't see a posting anywhere? What if my friend came to me and said, hey, there's an opening where I work? How would I express that? I'm consulting my friend. Let's switch it around. My friend, you could say my friend told me about, and we would say the opening. 
about the opening or about the open position. I heard about it from my friends. So you want to let them know how you heard about the job. That's important for employers to know. I'm glad, Woodley. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, it's nice to know that it helps. <laughs> yeah. If I had to do this in another country, in another language, I would need somebody to help me. Mm -hmm. So I know you would all do really, really, really well in a first language. But sometimes trying to do this and think of the words in a second language is not always easy. And you're doing application, and sometimes the person doing a big deal for the application. Oh, this is a... <laughs> and now, you know, just the simple things that you... Sometimes it just takes somebody to say, this is what you do, this is how you do it. And then it's not so scary anymore. <laughs> not so intimidating, if you know. And sometimes it's a cultural thing. Sometimes there's a difference in culture. Okay, I'm calling about the job as President of the United States. I saw you're posting at CareerWorks. <laughs> That's not really how we got Barack Obama, but. You would be, you would be the Secretary of State. <laughs> I'll be the Secretary of State, yeah. I want to do all the traveling. <laughs> all right, my telephone number. Now the next part is important because you want them to call you back. So we're going to leave your telephone number, but we're going to repeat it a second time. Because on a voicemail, if someone says his or her phone number only one time, then we do this all the time at the Adult Learning Center. You have to play the message again and again and again to hear it. So if we repeat it, it makes it a little bit easier for the person to write it the first time. And the way we pronounce phone numbers, hi. Oh, that's so funny. That's okay, come on in and have a seat. She made it, we have everybody here. And thank you for letting me know that I knew. Okay. I got the message. <laughs> phone numbers, when we pronounce phone numbers in English, we write it differently or we say it differently than we do addresses. For example, if I were giving my address, I would say my address is 211 Crescent Street. I would say 211, not on a phone number. Sometimes on phone, when people leave their phone numbers at the Adult Learning Center, they'll say 508-580-7475. That's very, very confusing to the ear of an English speaker. When you leave a telephone number, we leave each number individually. So we would say 508, or some people say 508, 580, or 580, 74, 75. A little bit of a pause. You don't want to say 74, 75. You don't want to say 580. That's okay for addresses. I live at 2530 Highland Street. I live at 8013 Strawberry Lane. But when you're leaving your phone number, we're going to leave individual numbers. Let's pronounce it together. 508. 508. 580. 580. 580. 580. 580. 580. 580. So, please write your telephone number, and then we're going to repeat the telephone number, say thank you, and hang up. And that will be our voicemail message.